few judicial fights have matched the intensity and drama of the Pennzoil-Texaco War, a bitter legal dispute over purchasing the illustrious Getty Oil in the annals of corporate history. The Getty Oil Company, led by the mysterious J. Paul Getty, became the focal point of a high-stakes business clash between Texaco, an industry juggernaut, and Pennzoil, a mighty oil giant, in 1984. This laid the framework for future events. When Pennzoil and Getty Oil started discussing a merger in the early 1980s, the seeds of this enormous conflict were already planted. A fascinating case for litigators and lawyers to ponder, study, and debate for decades. This legal battle illuminates various loopholes in federalism and brings other facets of the legal system regarding big businesses. Let's investigate the main points of the tale. Pennzoil sought to acquire Getty Oil Company in the case of Texaco Inc. versus Pennzoil Co. A public bid was made by Pennzoil to acquire the majority of Getty. Additionally, Pennzoil signed a memorandum of agreement to buy the shares of Getty's two most prominent owners. As a result, Pennzoil would have controlled the majority of Getty's outstanding shares. The board of directors of Getty had to approve the transaction. The Getty board submitted a counteroffer to accept the MOU's provisions in exchange for a higher share price. Pennzoil approved. To formalize the agreement, attorneys started writing legal paperwork. A news announcement announcing the deal was released by Getty and its stockholders. The next day, Pennzoil released a similar press release. The next day, the Wall Street Journal published an article on the deal. J. Hugh Liedke, chairman of Pennzoil. We had a handshake deal with Getty Oil. It was a binding agreement, and Pennzoil acted in good faith throughout the negotiations. They reached an agreement destined to create an energy problem never seen before. Before the merger could be completed, though, a new player snuck onto the scene. Notwithstanding the arrangement, Getty kept hunting for purchasers. In a meeting with the shareholders of Getty, Texaco made a higher offer. Texaco decided to alter the course of history because it knew the deal's enormous potential. In a risky move, Texaco made a covert agreement with Getty Oil and offered an alluringly higher proposal causing the merger of Pennzoil and Getty to fall through at the last minute. The next day, Getty Board rejected Pennzoil's final counteroffer in favor of Texaco. The agreement was promptly announced in a statement by Texaco. Texaco and Getty eventually merged. The consequences were swift and decisive. Given that Pennzoil and Getty had previously reached a legally binding agreement, Pennzoil claimed that Texaco's covert deal with Getty Oil violated the contract. Once the battle lines had been established, a grueling courtroom spectacle that would put both legal teams to the test ensued. In 1985, Pennzoil sued Texaco in Houston, Texas, demanding an astounding $14 billion in damages, a staggering amount even by modern standards. The trial received a lot of media coverage, making it the trial of the century and enthralling viewers worldwide. The main issue was whether or not Pennzoil and Getty Oil had created a legally enforceable contract. Pennzoil said that their discussions with Getty were advanced and that a handshake deal had been reached. On the other hand, Texaco insisted that there was no such agreement and that their offer was legitimate. Both legal teams generated mountains of material and witness testimony to support their assertions, and both teams expertly presented their positions. The courtroom was transformed into an arena where the titans of corporate law squared off and the future of two enormous organizations was on the line. J. Paul Getty II, son of J. Paul Getty and former chairman of Getty Oil, the whole situation is unfortunate and it's sad to see these two giants of the industry entangled in such a bitter legal battle. In 1985, the jury's decision, a blow to Texaco, came after weeks of compelling courtroom drama. 
the jury awarded Pennzoil a mind-boggling $10.53 billion in damages, the highest judgment in legal history at the time, after finding Texaco guilty of willfully interfering in the contract between Pennzoil and Getty Oil. Joe Jamile, Pennzoil's lead counsel after the verdict, this is a great day for justice. The jury recognized Pennzoil's rights and delivered a landmark verdict. But first, allow me to explain federal court legislation and federalist jurisprudence so you can grasp this. Federal courts are often aware of their restricted functions under a system of federalism, where the central government and the states share sovereignty, and there's a separation of powers. The U.S. Supreme Court explored federalism's restrictions on federal courts in Pennzoil versus Texaco. Due to a contract breach, Pennzoil filed a lawsuit against Texaco in a Texas state court. Pennzoil received an $11 billion damage award from the jury. For tortious interference with the contract, Pennzoil sued Texaco. The trial court awarded Pennzoil over $10 billion in compensatory and punitive damages. Texaco appealed. Texaco could not secure an appeal bond due to the size of the verdict, and Texas court regulations now require the posting of a bond equal to the total amount of the judgment to stay judgments pending appeal. Richard Lewison, vice president of Pennzoil, reflecting on the case. The Pennzoil-Texaco war was a defining moment for our company. It taught us valuable lessons about the importance of contractual integrity and ethical practices. The New York-based, seven days after the decision is made, Texaco is granted a temporary injunction. In the Securities and Exchange Commission permitted Mr. Holmes to expand his ownership of Texaco to 15% in August. The Texas Supreme Court denied Texaco's request to review the case. The chairman of Transworld Airlines, Carl E. Kahn, revealed intentions to buy some Texaco shares from Mr. Holmes in November. With a $348 million acquisition, Mr. Econ became the company's top shareholder and owned a 12.3% interest in Texaco. Federal bankruptcy judge Howard Schwarzenberg gave Texaco an extension to submit a restructuring plan on December 3, 1987. Shareholders and Pennzoil agreed on a restructuring strategy that called for paying Pennzoil at least $3 billion. After many talks, Texaco, Pennzoil, stockholders, and creditors agreed on a restructuring plan to pay Pennzoil $3 billion. Major players in the Texaco case had shares of 12.3% of Texaco Inc. and a reported 2% of the Pennzoil company, respectively, representing interests in the fates of both businesses. They influenced Pennzoil executives to agree to a $3 billion all-cash settlement amount so that he would profit financially from the agreement. The Pennzoil-Texaco War is still remembered as a seminal case that altered the parameters of business talks and acquisitions. It emphasized the value of honesty in business, stressing that even the most influential organizations are subject to the law. The case also demonstrated the need for carefully written contracts, since the interpretation and execution of these agreements might have broad ramifications. The legal community and aspiring business executives continue researching this historic conflict to understand the subtleties of contract law and company strategy. Chief Justice William Reinquist, who presided over the Supreme Court's denial of Texaco's appeal, the Pennzoil Texaco case highlights the complexities and challenges in contract law. It serves as a precedent for future legal disputes. The Pennzoil-Texaco War is proof of how brutally competitive business conflicts can be in court. It serves as a reminder that intricate discussions, moral problems, and the search for justice surround every sensational judicial drama. These business tycoons' purchase of Getty Oil set off a series of developments that would influence corporate law for many years. The Pennzoil-Texaco War would be recognized as one of the most notable episodes in the history of business and regulation because of the drama, intrigue, and monumental decision that has forever carved in the annals of corporate history. 
oil and honor narrate the tale of Texaco wanting to acquire Getty Oil despite a compromise between Pennzoil and Getty Oil and Texaco that had been made. The period between the deal-making and the court ruling directing Texaco to pay $11 billion to Pennzoil is less than two years. It is portrayed as a conflict between the new good old boys of Wall Street and the good old boys of the oil fields. By the time the verdict was announced, J. Paul Getty, who had been deceased for around 11 years, was arguably the most significant character in the narrative. Oil and Honor is a detail-rich reenactment of the highest stakes contest in business history and an enthralling courtroom drama. So that is all from the entire legal battle between two oil giants tugging at each other for acquiring the assets of Getty Oil. This tale of deceit and law has become popular amongst litigators in the past four decades. If you want more fascinating stories, please like our video and give us a thumbs up. This invigorates us to bring more jaw-dropping stories for you guys. And remember to like our channel and subscribe for more amazing content. Till next time, see you.